Coming up next, and we are already setting up a little bit behind me, um, is Ali Barakat. He is a Cairo-based game designer. And while we already had like a little bit of an introduction by Henrike to more personal games, more games about the process, about how you feel around games, we are going to go even deeper into how to really personalize and express yourself through games and how to give voices to those that are often left unheard. So please, help me welcome Ali Barakat with a big round of applause. This one is for you, Ali. <laughs> Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> all is good. Thank you for having me here. I think, I think your laptop is set up all oh, already. Oh, nice. So while <laughs> Ali is going to start his presentation, please don't mind, there will be some setting up of a synthesizer. OK. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm Ali Barakot. I came all the way from Cairo, Egypt, to here. And I am a designer, engineer, and musician. Currently trying to focus my work on creating immersive experiences and focusing on storytelling specifically. And yeah, it was such a journey coming here because I have faced so many technical difficulties. My fl flight got cancelled. However, before like going in onto like a very long rant, I want to focus on the talk, which is personal narratives, intersectionality, and playable experiences. Um, so. 2020 was one of the toughest years for me, uh, and I think many people can relate to that. However, I had my first therapy session, and during that, my therapist asked me a question, and it never occurred to me that I never thought about that before. So he asked me, like, when was the last time you felt peace? And I totally broke down because I, it occurred to me that I've never thought about that before. Like I was sort of surviving, not actually living or being an active part of my story. However, when I reflected a bit, I thought of a time where I felt peace, and this was during my childhood. So let's go back to 6 February 1996, uh, which is my birthday. Uh, so I grew up in Cairo uh, with, uh, with six other family members. So I had two siblings, and I'm the youngest one, so I'm the most annoying one. And uh, with, I grew up with my father, my mom, my aunt, and my grandfather. And I remember that I had a very peaceful childhood where I could freely explore myself and express myself. So I used to draw with my mom and play sports with my dad. and. Uh, hear my grandfather's stories and play the piano with my aunt. Um, and then I went to an all-boys school, uh, a Catholic school, a religious school. And things got more complicated. And I started feeling that I couldn't really be myself around people that I don't feel comfortable with. And I realized that the older I get, the thicker the walls become around me, and the less, aware I be, I, the less aware I am of the walls that I built. Uh, so, uh, and I remember when I was like seven years old, I was talking to my sister, and I told her, is it normal for someone to have like two different personalities? One at, uh, like with family and one in school. And yeah, I, I I wasn't able to really express myself or explore myself freely in school. And that was also, um, like this idea was strengthened by an event that happened in 2010, which is my high school trauma. And yeah, so basically there is a friend, uh, a person that I started um, 
getting closer to and feel vulnerable to. And I started sharing my art with, uh, which is something that I never do because art for me was something so sacred. Uh, so whenever we were sitting in class, I realized that he was using me uh, by invading my physical space. And um, yeah, I remember totally that I couldn't really believe that or I couldn't, I was in denial that one of my, the people that I um, trusted was actually getting advantage or like uh, invading my physical space and harassing me in a way. Um, and yeah, I totally denied this period and this period of my life, like the memories became so faded. Um, and I couldn't really talk about it with anyone until years and years later. It wasn't until 2020 um, when the Me Too movement started to grow in Egypt. Like people started talking about sexual harassment stories and sharing their own personal stories that I felt that I could finally acknowledge and admit and uh, let get hold of my narrative. Um, so that leads me to the idea of gatekeeping and the illusion of loneliness. So the idea is that sometimes it's harder to talk about conversations, especially when something uh, that is personal or vulnerable, uh, feeling that people would not relate. However, I think that it's so powerful to really understand and reflect inward and understand our own traumas and tensions and how they are reflected in our perception of the world. So let this inward reflection be our blueprint in designing things and in, in everything in our life, basically. Uh, so I realized that the deeper I dive in my own insecurities, traumas and thoughts and emotions, the more peaceful I become and the more active I become and present in my own story. And here's a quote of a book that I really like, uh, which is The Road Less Traveled. So uh, uh, it says, once we truly know that life is difficult, then life is no longer difficult. Because once it is accepted, the fact that life is difficult no longer matters. Then I started reflecting about like, the different versions of me. Like, and yeah, I thought that a story is being told by everyone we encounter. We have like millions of versions of ourselves. So it's very important for me to own my personal narrative and be able to understand that I'm the only one who can really tell my story in the most authentic way. And there is a power in that, uh, which is related to embodiment. And embodiment is the idea that you can really uh, experience the life of another person. So the power of embodiment comes in the idea is that it can make people more aware about their own inner tensions and uh, about their own um, perceptions, privileges, and biases, and subconscious blind spots. <sighs> so, yeah, so uh, basically for me, art was therapy. Like, I was using art and games as a medium to explore myself. So it was therapeutic for me as a creator to have my own space to explore myself freely and just express myself without thinking about how people would receive that. So before talking about my project, um, I want to have like a small musical break <laughs> and I will talk about like how I started uh, reflecting about my own struggles, thoughts and emotions through music and how I, my, and my creative process in writing uh, music. So I really hope this works. Yeah. It's not working. Yeah, the piano is not working yet, so... Yeah. 
So I started, uh, I couldn't really express, at first I couldn't really express myself through words, so I started using music as an outlet for my emotions and thoughts, and how I used to write music was very visual, so I was, I always think about patterns or movements and translate these movements into movements in my hand and try to uh, translate however I'm feeling in sort of a choreography with the piano itself. Um, however, for me personally, it's, it's very important to have both outlets, have an outlet where you can linguistically uh, express yourself and uh, as well like uh, using art. So, yeah. so this is one of my original piano pieces. Thank you. Uh, so now, <coughs> thank you so much. So now, after this small musical break, let's go back to game design. <laughs> um, so the project that uh, I'm exhibiting here today uh, in a maze is called The Game of Me. So it talks about my own personal life, and it consists of different modules. However, it all started with that page, which was the first page that I started journaling. And um, yeah, before that, I wasn't able to actually express myself through words, like I said before. So I started having a diary and writing in it. And then, yeah, this whole project emerged from it. So I made an interactive immersive installation exploring my journey towards self-love and compassion. And uh, 
The installation consisted of different parts. Um, the first part is the AR interactive diary. So basically, I thought maybe I could take this idea of having all my thoughts being journaled in a diary and make something interactive out of it. So I turned my actual diary into an interactive one by using augmented reality and using projection mapping. And uh, so people can th go through my thoughts and my memories um, and have like an intimate experience with the book itself. And then I made a projection mapping, uh, which was based on my memories. So I created uh, a generative code that takes all the things that I've collected, uh, like pictures, photographs, or cards, and turn them into an interactive installation and projection mapping. And then there was the third module, which was the subconscious game and generative musical th cities, uh, where the piano comes again in the picture. So that was the installation. Um, and that was uh, when I exhibited in um, uh, my master's degree. Uh, so it started with the idea of just wanting to do something that has to do with the journal and with the phone. So I did, the first iteration was me uh, just making an AR app where you go through, like the, you flip the pages of the book and you have like different conversations that are triggered whenever you see a certain image. Um, and then uh, I thought, uh, maybe it would be better if I use a projector. So it's sort of conceptually representing my thoughts and my memories that are projected on top of the book itself. So the second iteration was having the booklet and having using the projector and playing with the idea of mixing analog and very um, intimate uh, pieces of art with the digital part. Um, so yeah, that's a video of the uh, of the notebook. So basically, uh, whenever you flip the page, you have a story, and through a but some buttons, you can um, read the story and interact with it. And for some reason, the video is not okay working. Uh, so yeah, so using the button system, you can interact and you can read the stories, and it has some branching narratives. So. Uh, depending on the choices that you take, it will lead you to different parts of the story. And everything in that notebook was had this uh, organic feel. So I was very keen into mixing the digital and the analog part. So every illustration is hand painted, and uh, I'm using the camera to trigger the interactive memory. So I'm using augmented reality in order to detect the images and then display something related to that. And the game was all based on my most mem memorable conversations, thoughts, traumas, and important personal events. So it talks about uh, everything that I couldn't share before. And uh, this is a projection mapping. Um, so uh, it uses different um, uh, things that I've collected in my life, like photographs or notes from my phone or from my laptop, and I tried to keep it as authentic as possible, not really filtering things. So I was just collecting things that really represented me in a certain phase, which is the year of 2020. Um, and then the subconscious game, where the music comes back. So uh, I made a poetic digital game tackling the concept of intrusive thoughts. So basically, I made a code that, as I explained, I was thinking, how can I translate the m music into structures? So I made a, uh, a game where all the environment was procedurally generated out of my original piano music. So I 
used, like, was thinking about different ways to map music into structures, architectural structures. And I built a code that, uh, um, using the keyboard uh, and playing, uh, it generates these structures and these cities. And you can play, um, it, I built a walking simulator where you can play and go through with these music pieces as if you, I w I, I, as if it's a way to reconnect with my own intuition and inner voice. Um, so, yeah, I think I've talked about my family. I did a performance and I've talked about my project. So, yeah, that is the end of the talk today. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm so happy to be here. And uh, it's such, uh, like, Berlin has such an amazing energy to it. And I feel so... Uh, at home, even though it's my first time here, so <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Ali. That was really wonderful. I think everybody enjoyed your music so much. Thank you.